the particle in that little space, delta dx, will be proportional to how much time uh, the particle spends in this in that space. Makes sense? If it's spending more time there, in that space, uh, the probability of finding it there at the instant that you look at it uh, goes up, right? So uh, the probability is proportional to the amount of time that, it, that it's in that uh, delta x, that, that little bit of space, delta, delta x, um, right? So, uh, so, so the bigger the, the bigger your dt is in this in this you know, the amount of time it spends in that little delta x, the bigger that dt is, the higher the probability is of finding it there. Right? If you, if, uh, well, <coughs> right. So therefore, uh, dt is dx divided by this. Okay, here, here you've got it here, and that. Uh, that amount of time, it, well, here, put it this way. So this, this, this here, this uh, one over omega square root thing, this, this here, will be uh, proportional to your um, probability density of of it of you finding the particle at uh, at this at this x. Um, no, I hope I hope I hope you can see that. Can I explain that in a different way. Hmm. Uh, this this gives you now this is the probability density, right? Uh, and that's that's uh, a length. So this is in a sense a probability divided by length times a length, which just gives you a probability. So so what what you're seeing here is uh, the probability that it's in this small. Uh, delta x. And we just agreed before that the probability of being in that small x is proportional to dt. Right? The, the more time it spends here, dt, in this uh, small gap, uh, the higher the probability of it being there. But this, this is the probability of it being there, that much. So therefore this is proportional to that. And therefore um, uh, now, given that this is equal to this, therefore this is proportional to that. Hope you follow that logic. Okay. So therefore, this is proportional to that. So we uh, we can put this constant here. Now uh, we can now um, now we can normalize as as uh, you know, the usual definition of normalization. We we can find what well actually it's two constants. We can find what this constant is here by normalizing it. Now, let's assume uh, we're, talking, we're talking about the problem of finding the, the mass somewhere in the range. Let, let, let's say, uh, well, the, the range would be between plus and minus the amplitude, right? Because that's, you know, it's oscillating in there somewhere. It's got to be in there at some stage somewhere. Um, well, let, let's, let's say, uh, what's the probability? If it if it just does one half oscillation, like it oscillates from from a to minus a, and uh, you know that distance two a, uh, what's the probability of being in a delta x in within that range? Now it's got to be. Now it's it's oscillating between plus and minus a. It has to be in that range somewhere, right? For for a for a half cycle of time. So the probability that it's somewhere in that range is one. Okay, so we're, we're going to normalize. This. You've done talk about normalization a lot, right? So the probability density in in that range between the two amplitudes, uh, you know, plus minus, is is one. Now, when you actually do the math, so uh, you, know, you you put this in for your probability density, you integrate out high school calculus. And you get that the constant, well, this 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 thing here, is one over pi, right? So the probability density for classical mechanics is one over pi square root of you know, this this stuff. Now uh, we rewrite that in the following form. Um, instead of a squared, we call that two e over m omega squared. Why on earth do you do that? 
Well, because uh, in this form, it's very similar to what we will get in the future for the, class, uh, um, the quantum case. Right? So we rewrite, rewrite the classical uh, result in a form that will become, will become familiar uh, to the quantum case, uh, the, the quantum mechanical analysis of simple harmonic oscillator. Okay? And so it, it's just a simple substitution. Right? We, we're just saying this E here is, uh, by definition, so can, right? this E here is a half n over squared A squared. Now, if you plug that into here, uh, this will simplify to this. Right? But uh, we put it in this form because it's similar to what we will get uh, in the quantum case. Right? So you know, we'll return to this classical value after handling the quantum case. All right, now now we can uh, do what? What's this? Our fifth? I'm <laughs> losing track. <laughs> uh, we have four chapters. This is now the second chapter on uh, on STE, S T I E, the Schrödinger time independent equation. Uh, so you know, with four chapters, which is what almost a third of the book. Uh, it shows that the STI is a very important topic. It's, uh, so solving the Schrodinger equation is essentially what, what wave mechanics is. And so, uh, so right now let's actually do it for the simple harmonic oscillator. So now we're beginning the, the quantum case. Right? So here's, here's your time independent Schrodinger equation, your STI. So, you know, minus h bar squared over 2m, d, d squared u dx squared plus v u equals e u, right? The celebrated uh, STI, the time independent equation of Schrodinger. Now, in this case, this particular case, and I, I've been saying quite a few times, uh, you just, for a different situation, you have a different potential. You know, your v, your v uh, will change from case to case. Well, in this case, uh, the case is uh, the simple harmonic oscillator, the SHO, and the potential is just half k x squared, half k x squared. All right. So you plug that in, you plug in that value, a half k x squared, into your v here, and then then it just becomes dE's. Right? Been through this quite a few times already. So uh, if you're going to be a really good uh, wave mechanic. Uh, you better be good at uh, DEs, solving differential equations. All right. Uh, okay. So take take this form. Here's your st here, and uh, you can simplify that to this form. Right now, uh, your v here has an x squared in it, so that complicates things. So you've got a second differential and an x squared here. So uh, you know we're into into new territory here uh, for differential equations. Um, so if now we, we simplify things, we substitute instead of x, uh, we talk about z, but z is just a, a constant times x, and we choose this particular constant. Why? Well, I'll simplify. It. So you, you know, if you do that, you can transform, translate this. You know, the standard uh, STI into this form, which is, you've got to admit, uh, a lot easier, right? Um, and this, this epsilon here, uh, fifth letter of Greek alphabet, epsilon, um, is proportional to your energy, your eigenvalue here, here. Here's your eigenvalue, your uh, allowed energy. And as usual, um, you know, we're talking quantum mechanics, quantized mechanics. So uh, we expect to uh, prove, you know, it just falls out of the mathematics, that the, uh, the energy, again, in the uh, simple harmonic oscillator case, is again quantized. Right? In fact, that will be the last, <laughs> down here, the last line, before I run out of space. Uh, I will, you know, hopefully in two days, I will have a new board, much bigger. So. Uh, Expect changes. All right. Okay. Now, so so now now things boil down to just solving the differential equation, and hence proving and hence showing that this e here, the e is proportional to the energy. Uh, why is that? Here, here. There, there's your energy eigenvalue of your steam, 
and E is just uh, you know, a constant times the energy. So this, this is effectively an energy, so epsilon, as distinct from E. Okay, now uh, it's this U here is a wave function, so uh, you expect it to drop off to zero at great distance. So now since z and x, z is proportional to x, so just, just think of z as a distance, not because it is, just a constant times a distance. So um, 